What is going on today, guys? Happy Thursday to you. Uh, today we're going to do a deep dive into the Charvel ProMod DK24, which I have right here. You've probably seen this guitar before in some other of my YouTube videos. Uh, but I've yet to really demo it on its own, so we're going to do that today. Stick around to the end of the video, by the way, uh, to find out why you might not want to buy this guitar. But uh, a little more on the good stuff first. Let's talk about the pros. Uh, Charvel, if you don't know, is owned by Fender, as is Jackson. And let's go through the uh, name designation first of all. So Pro Mod is the style of the series of this guitar. DK24 stands for Dinky Body 24 Frets. Uh, the Dinky Body, it's, it's, it's supposedly it's like an eighth inch smaller, you know, proportionally to a regular Strat size body. So it's a little bit smaller and a little bit lighter because of that too. Alder body and maple neck. It's gorgeous. You know, caramelized is the same as roasted, is the same as baked. You know, they all use different verbiage, but it's basically the same thing. They throw the necks in a kiln to kind of dry them out. And uh, what that does is supposedly it takes out the moisture, uh, thereby eliminating or mitigating the, you know, expansion contraction that occurs with woods you know when you go from different temperatures different seasons different humidity levels etc so it's supposedly supposed to be more rigid you know overall plus this has um, reinforcement rods in it as well to help keep it stable the neck is very stable uh, we'll go over some of the cons a little later I did incur some uh, fret sprout uh, a couple months after purchasing the guitar so apparently it was still drying out so I don't know what that was all about but Anyways, uh, yeah, caramelized maple neck and fingerboard, alder body. This color, I love this color. This is absolutely, out of all my guitars, this is my favorite color right there. That is satin burgundy mist, and it is just beautiful. I just can't get enough of this thing. Aesthetically speaking, this is my favorite guitar just by the looks of it. I can't stand it. It's just, it's awesome. What do you think? Right? Seymour Duncan pickups. It comes stock with the full shred in the bridge and the Alnico 2 Pro in the neck. Uh, the Alnico 2 Pro is nice. It's, it's, it's a warm, they call it buttery sound. It's very smooth, mild overdriven tones. I like it a lot. The full shred, uh, that's another story. That kind of has a lot of treble and a lot of brightness and clarity to it, which clarity is good, you know, if you're looking for, for that kind of sound. <laughs> This guitar comes stock with Charvel branded uh, locking tuners, which hopefully I can get those in focus. Uh, they work really well. You know, those machine heads are really smooth and, and precise. I have no tuning issues with that at all. It also comes with a GraphTech XL Tusk Nut. So that essentially that's the lubricated or, you know, silicone impregnated nut uh, to help keep the strings from binding in the nut when you're doing your bends and stuff like that. Lumen Lay side dots. I feel like Lumen Lays are kind of like a, a mainstay in guitars now, nowadays. It's like if they don't have them, why don't they? Because everyone else does. Heel mounted truss rod right there. Provides easy access when you want to do some truss rod adjustments, which I seldom do on this neck, but you know, it's right there when you want to get at it. So you don't have to play around with a little plate up here taking it off or worse yet you know the old fenders you got to take the whole neck off to access it that's uh nonsense uh the bridge let's talk about that bridge what do you think of that guys that right there is a goto 510 bridge it's a really nice stable floating trim it's a two-point trim that's why the guitar acronym or the name for the guitar includes a two point uh, two point trim there and this thing is really stable too I'm really surprised at how well that functions now it doesn't have a locking nut obviously so this guitar is not made for the huge whammy tricks you know the Steve Vai stuff or the uh, Van Halen dive bombs and all that stuff you could do it but then your guitar is going to be immediately out of tune <laughs> Yeah, the Goto 510 bridge is really for your more subtle 
just your subtle flutters and, and you know your nice vibrato and stuff like that. It's real, real tasteful. And when you're not messing around with it, the thing stays in tune. Uh, intonated really well. I love it. So it's got your basic, you know, volume tone, five voice selector switch. And the switch right here is for series and parallel for your pickup combinations. Uh, when it's up, they're parallel setup, and then when it's down, they're, they're running in series. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about the, the pots themselves, too. So the volume pot is an EVH Borns low friction pot. So essentially, low friction means this thing just spins like nothing. I mean, it's like wet ice and wet ice. It just spins. As a matter of fact, it spins too much, too loosely for me. The tone knob is a no-load tone, meaning that when it's in the full open position on 10, it's essentially no load, so there's, it's it's basically bypassed completely, which is, you know, if you're a metal guy or hard rock guy, you're probably not messing around with your tone knob too much. In fact, some of you guys prefer not to have a tone knob, and I get it. That's what that does. So your no load tone pot, is it's off completely when it's in the 10 position. Uh, if you want to get it down and you want to play with the tone knob a little bit, you have to go through a little gate. It's just like a little soft click. You can feel it though. You can't really, you know, show it on the camera, but maybe you can hear that, pick that up. And then you, you know, then it works essentially as a normal tone. Now, the back of this guitar, let's talk about that for a minute. Look at the back of this body. Look at the carves, the cutaways and all that stuff. Just beautiful. I love the shape of that, the cuts. It's awesome. That heel joint right there. They call that a shredder's heel or something to that effect. It provides complete access all the way up the fretboard. I mean, I can get past 24, no problem. Um, and I've got small hands. This is, you know, for a modern axe, that's how you do a heel joint right there. It doesn't get better than that. Uh, I love it. Uh, one piece neck, solid all the way through. There's no scarf joint or anything like that. There's also no volute on this one. Some guitars have that volute, which I think helps create more stability or rigidity in the uh, top of the neck by the head by the headstock not necessary you got to check this out look at where the input jack is it's not on the front, it's not really on the side, it's kind of like behind, right there. That's awesome, look at that angle. Hope the camera's picking that up, can you see that? That is so clever, like that is, of all guitars, including gems, everything else, that is like by far the coolest, best position you could put an input jack. Uh, the cable goes right from there to your strap, you know, if you're on stage or just stand, you know, playing, standing up. It works great. Let me know what you guys think about this. This guitar is a 2019. These are made in Mexico, by the way. This guitar is still available on Charvel's website currently in stock. They list it for MSRP is uh, $9.99, so a thousand bucks. I got a little better deal than that, but essentially, you know, that's what you can expect to pay for this guitar. Now, let me say this. They do have a USA custom shop. Uh, so USA Select Series or something like that. And they make the same guitar in two different colors. So it's not offered in this color for the USA version. It's offered in like an oxblood red and then like a gloss black. But other than that, the guitar is virtually the same. The only real difference, significant difference, is it has stainless steel frets. This one made in Mexico has the normal nickel frets. So you got to kind of factor that in. Are you somebody who only plays stainless steel frets? Well, then you're gonna to wanna to look at that guitar there. However, I would say this, the price for the USA version of this same guitar is $3,300. So it's $2,300 more than this one here to get stainless steel frets. And one other difference I saw on the website is it has Spurzel locking tuners instead of Charvel labeled tuners. I don't really think that constitutes, you know, $2,300 difference in price, but maybe you do. Um, and I'm sure that, you know, the custom shop pays a lot more attention to the fine details of the fretwork and the neck and, and the leveling and all that good stuff. 
But honestly, right out of the box, this thing was solid. I had no, no issues with this at all. This thing is a solid rock monster. <laughs> I'm a convert, man. I, I, <laughs> I was always an Ibanez person and then until I picked up a Charvel. This is my second one. I also have a hardtail, which you've probably seen in some of my uh, previous YouTube videos. But this thing I definitely converted. I mean, these are great. These are solid. And for a thousand bucks, you know, you really can't go wrong. I mean, this, this thing has all the, all the features, bells and whistles I would want in a modern super strat style guitar. You know, it's not too flashy either. That's a sick color. I mean, come on. Satin burgundy mist, caramelized maple neck and fingerboard. You know, the craftsmanship on this guitar is great. The rolled edges that they do on this fingerboard makes it so smooth. It's, it's like, it makes the neck almost feel thinner than it is, you know, skinnier or narrower than it is, but it's really not. It's just so smooth and comfortable, I can't say enough about it. Um, a couple, of, a couple little issues that I would, you know, if I had to nitpick at something, is that the nickel frets, you know, for a thousand dollar guitar in, in that range, you, at the, in this day and age, you probably would expect it to come with stainless steel frets. I, I would anyways. I mean, if they said, you know, thirteen hundred dollars or fifteen hundred dollars gets you the stainless steel frets, I probably would have paid the extra money for that. Um, you feel the difference, you know. Is it huge? Not really, but. You know, for those of you that have nickel frets at home, just take a string and just kind of, just bend it back and forth. You can feel it kind of grind and grip after a while. And I think that's what nickel does. Stainless steel, it just, it seems to continue to glide and stay smooth. This gets real gritty feeling. You know, maybe, maybe these frets need a little bit of a, a polish job. You know, maybe they weren't the most highly polished from the factory. Something to consider. Other issues I would have with this guitar Again, super minor. I don't even know why I'm mentioning it. But the, the string trees that came with this, the stock ones, they were like that faux-looking roller string trees. They're not, they don't really roll, but they kind of look like they should. So I swapped them out with these. You know, I got them on Amazon or something, or Reverb or something for probably eight or ten bucks. Um, roller string trees, if you don't know, they just help the strings to kind of, they spin so that when the string, you know, is pulled, whatever, basically it rolls through the... <laughs> string tree. So, okay, if you made it this far to the video, let me explain to you now why you may not want to purchase this guitar. You're considering it, you like the look of it, you've played them before, maybe you like the way they feel and sound, but here's one thing I would definitely consider uh, before making that purchase. The Seymour Duncan Full Shred Pickup in the bridge is extremely bright. Um, yeah, they call it articulate, they call it high clarity, this and that. If you look up on Seymour's website, it's a huge peak for the treble, and then the bass and mids are really low for that particular pickup. And I feel like you don't ever need that much treble in any pickup in any guitar if it's in the bridge. It's bright enough because of the position of where it's located. So this this pickup is just so bright that at every amp sim I use, or every you know every time I try to dial in a sound, I just have to EQ that treble out completely because it's just way too much. Um, if you have some really warm sounding amplifiers, maybe that would work. Or if you're doing low gain tones like blue stuff or you know clean things, maybe you like that. I don't know. It's not really for me. Um, I've tried and tried to kind of make this full shred pickup sound good, and you know, judge for yourself with the sound samples in the video. But I just feel like it's too much work for what it's worth, and it's medium output, which is okay. You know, I'd rather have a higher output. But basically, just the EQ on it is just too out of whack for me. So I really want to get that swapped out. So, you know, consider that if you're going to buy this guitar. If I want to replace just that pickup with another Seymour Duncan, like that looks the same, they don't make another model. Seymour Duncan doesn't have another pickup model that looks identical to this. These have the parchment white color, I guess they call it, and the uh, hexagonal Allen screws at, for the pole pieces. I didn't see any other pickup on Seymour Duncan's website that looks identical to this, so I would probably have to have them custom make something. You know, pick another, take another pickup from their site and then make them build it to look match this because I, I love the look of this. The white on that on this color is just sick, and uh, I wouldn't want to change that at all. But this pickup's got to go at some point, so that's going to be you know 
after tax and shipping, that's going to be 200 bucks. So factor that in. If you really don't care for the full shred sound, you know, that's up to you. But that might be a reason why you might not want to get this guitar. What else can I say about it? You know, not much negative really to say. Easy to set up. That trem is just... Wait till you get it, man. You're just going to love it. I mean, the, the trem arm screws in. It doesn't pop down like, you know, some Floyd Roses. But it doesn't get loose and jiggly either. And you can set the height depending on how far you screw it down. Basically like an old, you know, Fender Strat uh, whammy bar. You know, you screw it in as far as you want to go. But it doesn't get loose and jiggly. It's just always tight. It's always right there when you need it. It doesn't drop down. It stays wherever you want to place it. If you want it right there, it stays there. If you want it in the back for flutters, it stays right there. Let me know your thoughts down below. You know, do you own one of these? Are you thinking of getting one of these? I would definitely consider it, you know, if it's within your budget. Um, because how many budget guitars can we all buy, be, you know, before you're like, I need something a little better, right? But you're not ready to spend two grand or $1,500. This is where you go. Uh, like I said, they list for a thousand bucks on the website. I think you can do a little better. Uh, you know, at your local guitar shop or if you know somebody, you probably can get this for eight fifty nine hundred somewhere in that range. So uh, definitely consider it. You never know. Uh, I love these things. Ibanez, I've converted over from Ibanez. I mean, I still have those. I love them too. But this is just like an everyday great guitar. You want to do blues, jazz, low gain tones, neo soul, whatever the new rage is on, you know, on TikTok and uh, Instagram these days. Whatever you want to play, this thing has got you covered. But if you want to do heavy metal, uh, you know, new metal, doom, all that dark stuff, you need a heavier pickup. You know, whether you're going to go Nazgul, uh, Sentient, or you want to do, you know, something else heavy like that, you know, you're going to need something heavier. So, otherwise, it's a modern axe. I got, I got no, no issues with this thing. Let me know what you guys think. This thing's badass. Gotta love it. Charvel, keep doing more of this because, damn... It's like, I want to buy another one of these just because it plays so well and it's so beautiful. It comes in uh, uh, two other colors. I think there's a black and then there's like a matte blue frost, which is like a real, like a light icy blue in the same finish. And uh, that looks sick too. And then they also obviously have a uh, humbucker, single coil, single coil. Uh, now they've got three single coils, humbucker, single coil, humbucker. They basically have every configuration of pickups that you would ever want in this same body style, in the dinky style with the 24 frets. So check it out on the website. You know, if you've got the funds and you're looking for something like this, pick it up because it's well worth it. It's the, the neck is so comfortable. It's not too thin. It is basically a modern C, um, a little flat, not quite a D. It's, it's like a C with a little bit of a flat spot, just a little, just every, you know, tiny, tiny bit of a flat spot there in the back. But I really wouldn't call it a D. It's still a C. You know, maybe it's a U. I don't know what the hell letter it is. X. Let's call it that. X type. Wait, that's a Jaguar. So what do you guys think of that guitar? Love it or leave it? I think this thing is sick. Um, the craftsmanship is ridiculous. You would not be disappointed. They really upped their game. These guys are gunning for some of the bigger names. And uh, they're on their way there. The finish is great. The, the feel is great. The sound is great. You know, it's a modern axe, but it doesn't look cheap. It's just, it's tasteful, understated elegance. I love this guitar. Charvel, two thumbs up. Keep doing what you're doing. I love this thing, man. And uh, I've got two of them. And who knows, someday I might get another one because uh, I can't get enough. This thing is like candy. It looks like candy. It tastes like it. It's, well, no, it doesn't taste like candy. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. If it was candy, I would eat it. Let's put it that way. Yeah, so that's it for today, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the little demo I did there. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, click the like button, do all that good stuff, notification bell, whatever you got to do. Uh, I want to bring more content to you guys. Keep me motivated. Uh, you know, I need more subscribers. What can I say? Help me out. This channel's for you guys too. You know, I enjoy doing it, but I'm bringing you the content that you guys want to see. Um, leave a comment down below too. Let me know what you want to see more of. What, you know, what interests you more? Do you not like this format we're doing here? You know, you want something different views, you want more music, you want more demo song, demo tracks, let me know about that stuff too. I'm extremely thankful for all the subscribers I have so far, I'm trying to keep building the channel and grow it up, blow it up, whatever we can do. Mom says if I get to 50 subscribers, her and dad will take me out for ice cream, so help me out there guys. <laughs> Click the subscribe button, stay informed, I'll try to come back to you soon with another one, and uh, until next time, stay healthy, stay safe, be smart.
See ya!